How to put nail art on your phone case by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, so in today's video I'm going to be showing you how you can use nail art methods in alternative ways. So a little while ago I made a 3D rose ring using acrylic, and so today I'm going to be using acrylic and some paint and nail art brushes, and some other brushes too, but to make to decorate my phone case. And the case I'm using is from Swiss QA I bought off Amazon, and there'll be a link in the description box. And it's a really lightweight, flexible phone case, which makes it ideal for doing nail art on it because the flexibility makes it easy to remove and put back on, which means that there's gonna be less fussing with it and less chance of you maybe chipping or cracking or something to the nail art that's on the case. And I'll also be giving you lots of tips um, for just doing nail art on a phone case because there's a couple learning curves that you have to get through just to make sure that it sticks and lasts as long as you would like it to. So I hope that you like this and find it helpful and don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. So here's the phone case, as I mentioned, it's from Swiss QA and it's not a super heavy duty phone case. Um, the one that I use normally is a lot thicker and I feel like if I drop it, it's gonna be safer. But for doing this, it's perfect. And if, like I mentioned, if you're just going out for a special occasion, it's the best. So then I'm using multi-surface paint and that is part of the big keys. It has to be multi-surface and satin works the best because there's different sheens. So multi-surface satin paint is what I, and then you can buy it at Walmart or Michaels or Hobby Lobby or any place that has acrylic paint. So now I just filed the case with a 180 grit file just to slightly damage the surface, just so that that's gonna give something for the paint to really adhere to. If you don't do that, it will stick and it will last for a long time. It just will peel off a little faster than if you do do it. So then as I am behind on my voiceover saying, we're going to be painting the purple part of the phone. So the part that's gonna be a solid color and like I, I mean, you can use the tips that I'm gonna be giving to do any design that you want, but to do mine is the way I'm gonna be um, instructing this. So I first just drew out the sections of purple with a little nail art brush, um, this little striper one, and then I filled in the areas, and as you can see, it is not opaque. There is streakiness and sheer spots, so it's gonna end up taking about four coats. But now I'm going to be outlining each section that is going to be the negative space, with a thin white line, and then within the negative space, I'm gonna be adding a filigree pattern. And so to do the filigree, I would recommend using a brush that you're familiar with. So don't try to start with a brush that's new, just because you wanna make sure that you have some familiarity with it and you know how it works. And also for doing filigree, start in the center of your swirl and then work your way out Usually that's the way I think is the easiest. And also, you don't try to make the entire swirl with one stroke. Pick up your brush and reevaluate how it's working between each one. That's just gonna make the whole thing go a little smoother and easier for you. So then I'm just gonna do the rest of these. I skipped ahead because that's a lot of watching me paint filigree that would take forever and not really be that interesting. And then as I mentioned right now, I'm just gonna take and fill in or go over my purple again. I did this every so often just so that it got opaque by the time I got to it. So now I'm going to be working on the smaller section, that upper section of the purple, and I'm gonna be filling it in with one stroke flower. So I have my one stroke nail art brush dipped half in purple, half in white, and then I just brushed it off on my hand so that I have that nice blend of the brush, of the paint on the brush. And then I'm doing five petaled flowers and I go over them twice. And so when you're using multi-surface paint, I wouldn't recommend using that on nails all of the time because it's not quite as opaque as just the regular craft paint. And it also isn't, it's a little thicker. And it, it's just a little bit different. I mean, as you, I'm sure can imagine being that it's meant for different things. It's just, it has a different feel to it, but it does work really well for doing one stroke flowers and that filigree. It has almost a more creamy consistency maybe is the word I'm trying to think of here. If you do get it and you do do this, you'll see how it is and you'll see what I'm talking about. It just, it's not quite the same. So I'm just gonna take and I'm filling in my flowers, filling in that section all the way around. And I am doing some partial plow, partial flowers on the edges and also along the, um, well, all the edges, there's four of them, along all the edges. And then once I'm satisfied with all those, I'm gonna go through and add another layer of petals, this time only making three petals because it's a lot smaller of a space. And once again, with the white towards the outside of the flower and the purple in the inside. And if you don't do 3D nail art, this 
the other section of the purple you could definitely fill in with these really pretty one stroke flowers however if you do like using acrylic then this is where i'm doing my 3d flowers in this area so i used also white and purple as i'm sure you can tell by now is my theme and i'm gonna take and i'm doing purple in the middle of my flower and white on the outside and I was going to do five petaled flowers when I first set out to do this, but they ended up being three petaled flowers, and so I just decided to run with that and keep it looking that way. And so when you're doing two-dimensional or three-dimensional flowers, but you're doing two colors, you want to first get a bead of white on your brush and then get a bead of purple. If you try to do the purple first and then grab a bead of white, the whole thing is going to turn purple. And so you want to make sure you grab your white first. And then because I have this extra space in there, I'm just going to take and fill in any gaps with some white, um, what's the word? Leaves. That's the word. With leaves. And I didn't want to do any partial of the three dimensional flowers. I just want to make sure that they were all whole, which is why I'm filling them in with leaves. And here's a little thing that I want to say. Because this case is flexible and you don't want your three dimensional work to be cracked when you take it off leave little spaces between each flower and don't let the leaves touch the flowers or try to avoid the leaves touching the flowers that's going to give you more of a flexibility and more space for your case to be bending a little bit so that you don't end up with cracked art so just leave tiny little gaps between everything as much as you can and then in the center of each flower i'm going to take a tiny little bead of clear acrylic and then i'm going to attach a really sparkly little rhinestone in the center of each of my flowers and one thing that I did that I did not videotape so that you don't see is that I also outlined the edge of the purple around the case, the perimeter, with white too, just to clean up that edge. And then I'm going to be filling in all that background space with a really sparkly, glittery purple. And the way that I did this is I had just some gel top coat on the side, and I'd get some on my brush, and then I'd dip it into glitter. This really gorgeous purple glitter that I am in love with right now. It's kind of holographic a little bit. So you see some flecks of silver and red and green and all it's stunning. And then I just filled in around all the flowers and then cured it. And now I'm going to be outlining the edges of each flower petal with just a thin white line. White ac acrylic paint is going to be a brighter shade of white than white acrylic. And once you have all that done, I'm just going to be covering up all the rest of the area with some gel top coat. And I'm not going to worry about covering up the purple glitter because it already was basically top coat. And it used no wipe top coat. It's going to be a lot easier than if it has that tacky layer. So I'm going to do half my phone case. So I'm going to do the bottom half and then cure that. And then take it out and do the top half and do it that way. Just so that you don't have to deal with touching it when it's covered in top coat. And then once you're all done, you can snap it onto your phone. And you are all set and that gel top coat is also going to be a nice flexible um, type of product that's going to keep that from cracking as well so you can use regular top coat but it dries harder and harder progressively so does the gel but I would just recommend going with a flexible product like gel top coat and then as I don't know if I mentioned this or not but this phone case has a little credit card slot and you can still use it even with the nail art on top which is why I put the 3D nail art down below instead of up where those one stroke flowers are because if you put the 3D up there, you won't be able to get your card in or out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found some helpful tips and tricks in here and share any recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram and comment if you've got questions, I'll answer them and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.